When you want to put a picture in your template, well, you can go to Candid and just drag a picture over and place it on the page. You can't really control here the size as well as you can if you use a photo box. You can change the size again, but most likely you're not going to be able to change the size and it's going to be much more difficult. What you'll want to do instead is start with a photo box. Take a photo box, whatever type you want, and move it over to the page. You'll see it's basically a gray page. You can change the size of the photo box in the way that you want. You can make it very large, you can make it very small. Okay? Then, you go find a picture you want to use. I'm going to go to the JV Volleyball picture. And I'm going to go into the JV Volleyball picture. I will click on it and drag it over. Before I let that go, notice that some of the pictures have a green check mark. That means someone in the yearbook has already used that picture. Look at the yellow one. That means no one has used that picture yet. If you click on it, it'll show your preview. If you click on the green check mark, it will show you what pages it's been using. Now, back to the picture. We have a picture uh, of volleyball, and it seems to have already put it in pretty good. I think I would like to cross it a little. If you double click on it once it is Green, double click on it, will turn blue. Now, the blue is where you can change the shift or zoom in and zoom out. You can zoom in by taking it away. You can also move the picture around within the box while the outside is green so that you can get a better picture. Now, if you double click again, it will turn yellow and you can crop the picture. Typically, you will not crop the picture because we will be working within a template. But now I've changed the way it looks because outside it will take it back to the picture. Along with the other aspects of the picture, you can also do different stuff. If you go to the bottom of your left hand menu, you'll see that there are color adjustments. You can click on sepia. And it will turn, turn it into an older looking picture with the brownish hue. You can change the picture to a black and white picture. You can also adjust the brightness. Let's say it's too bright. You want to darken it up a little bit. You would also decrease the, the content. Let's say it's dark. You brighten it up. You want to also increase the contrast. Now this picture, the, the brightness is pretty good. So let's go back to the zero where we saw them. And take the picture the way it was. Now, you also can have a border. You can't feel still in a, a picture box because it's all of that picture. The picture is a bit. But we can adjust the border. You can adjust the border by changing the color. You want to change the color of the border. You can also change the size of the border. You can use the size that you want. Other effects you can do a drop shadow. Now, when you do a drop shadow, it gets the default drop shadow is very light and almost you can't see it. The way you adjust the drop shadow, the way you adjust the drop shadow is first the transparency will make it darker if you decrease the transparency. Decrease transparency. Notice that it gives you the number that you are taking it to. If we decide to do something, it needs to all be the same. 
So let's say 38 in 40. So definitely see a charge darkness. Move a little bit more dark. The effect. If you want to take it further away from the picture, you can move it up. If you want it even closer or to the other side of the picture, put it down. Let's say we want it on the left hand side. But we want it a little below as well. Wait, no, that's just left. Below this is so now we've changed the direction of the shadow. The shadow you can also change how blurry the shadow is on the outside. Now this obviously we have a mix pin blur. If it's zero, it's completely crisp. It doesn't really look like a shadow. Or you can make it completely blur and it makes it very blurry. The, the default in the middle tends to be the best. You can also make the picture itself transparent so that you can barely see it. You can make it just a little transparent or not transparent at all. You can also, for instance, let's say it would be better for this picture if she were facing the other direction. You can flip the picture. You can also flip it vertically. But we won't do that very often. Maybe a bit too. But you can flip the picture so that she's facing the other direction. And it doesn't matter which way. Sometimes it just might look better if she flips, depending on what's around her and the design of the layout. That is most of the possibilities for pictures. The other item that you can choose is shape with pictures. If you want, if you use a square shape and you've decided that you want something different, you can go click on it, drag it, and place it on top of the picture and it will change the shape of the picture. In, in terms of editing pictures, there are two warning signs that you can see. The first you've probably seen before when it turns red. It says the image will be placed close to the trim edge and may be turned off. This means that where it is close, it could be right here where you press it, but it could be further down than it is trimmed. And you want to be careful of the way it's going to place people's heads, especially if it's going to be off the side. You want to, that might be a reason to use the flip of a picture if a if person's head is near the edge. Yeah. Yes, I want to leave it there. The other one for a picture is the most important for us. And that is, if you make a picture large enough, it's going to come back and say, resizing the image to this size will result in the DPI being under 200. This means when it is printed, it will not look good been stretched too much and it will look what we call pixelated, meaning it will have little squares and it will not be a clear picture anymore. And so you definitely do not want to do that. Do not ignore this problem ever. Always say no and it will change it back. That particular warning is extremely important because we do not want pictures to look bad. 